It was so funny to watch this little guy. He was going up to each car. I think he was begging for snacks. Hi there, four nights. We made it, made it to Canada, made it to Banff. So the day after Canada Day, eh? <laughs> We're at the ghost town of Bankhead, right uh, in the Banff National Forest. We're going to take a hike down here and check out the old ghost town. It's all night. Just a second. Just a second. This is, see, that's what I'm worried about. <laughs> this is it's very seasoned, bear encounters are likely. As long as we have people down here with us, that'll be better. I think they said there's like seven, 70 something stairs. Is there? Maybe. Count them. At its peak in the 1900s, over a thousand residents lived and worked here uh, at the anthracite coal mine. So this was the lamp house. And what they did was at the beginning of the uh, each day, the beginning of each shift, the coal miners would come here and they would get a lamp. At the end of the day, they would return the lamps and um, so they would know if anybody was missing. These are some old foundations. And then back over there, I can see the trains that they used to use to bring the coal in and out from the mine. And then down here, it's all black. You can see these are, this is the remainder of some of what they mined. The coal, it's coal. This is a big building here. Yeah, pretty big here. The Cascade Mountains here are full of anthracite. It's a high quality coal. And uh, due to the high carbon content and low impurities and high energy output, it's considered the best quality coal. The first company to open a coal mine in the Cascade Mountains was the Canadian Anthracite in 1886. Uh, due to the position of the coal seams in the mountain, the miners had to dig below the water table and that resulted in the mines being flooded. So the coal mining operation was discontinued in 1904. The Canadian Pacific Railway needed the high quality coal, the anthracite, to run their trains. So in 1903, they ended up opening their own mining operation to mine the anthracite here. They formed the Canadian Pacific Coal Mining Company. And here we are at the trains. What are these considered? These are old coal carts. Coal carts, okay. With a steam engine on the front. Okay. This is where the miners would ride on the back. Okay. that each car held two tons of coal and there were usually 30 cars to a train. The locomotive was powered by compressed air to reduce the chance of igniting methane gas in the tunnel.
This is the Tipple building. This is where they would sort the gold and the rock out. They said that it's about 100 feet tall. Pretty amazing. So this is what's left of the boiler house. So here, coal was burned to heat the water in large containers. The steam it produced provided power to the equipment that ran the mining operations. <laughs> You're gonna pay for that later. <laughs> By 1922, the coal mine operation closed. They said it just wasn't profitable enough to keep going. The buildings here were taken apart and sent to Canmore, uh, Calgary, and Banff. So this is all that's left are just the foundations on a lot of the buildings. Next to these old rail cars, there were some pumps that used to carry fresh air to the mines underground. Oh, I think we found, maybe found them down here. Let me go check this out. You found it? Oh, uh, no. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Darn. So during its short time in operation, 15 miners lost their lives working the mine. Whenever there was a fatality, though, at the mine, the funeral and burial took place in uh, nearby Banff because there were no, there was no cemetery here in Bankhead. So we're gonna finish climbing the steps to go back now, and we're done exploring for right now. Yep, she's just looking for an excuse to rest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of breath, so we're gonna go to the hotel and check in, I think. Yep. And see what other kind of trouble we can get into. So we'll catch up with you guys later. Bye. Bye.